Let's bring in the member for Fowler, now independent MP, Dai Lee. Dai, always good to see you. First of all, can I ask you about what um, has been discussed a little bit more openly now? Still anonymous Labor sources in the Australian newspaper saying essentially that they're worried about um, Western Sydney voters in particular and where the government ha is being viewed in terms of the Israel... Palestinian uh, conflict. Can you bring any insight there? Look, I think uh, in, in my office, we have received many emails from constituents um, from all uh, backgrounds. So it's not just from people who will identify as having them following the Muslim faith, but from all backgrounds um, saying that as, you know, we need to call for a ceasefire. So that's, uh, and, you know, my community are often don't you know, reach out and, 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 and join mass campaign emails as other communities do. But um, in this uh, case, in terms of the Israeli-Palestinian issue, there have been a lot of people asking for ceasefire. And many have reached out, you know, to me saying, you know, because I was the first person that they've heard um, in, in, in my capacity as a federal MP, I think on Q&A last year, calling for a ceasefire. Um, and... There is that um, feeling in the community that the government's not doing enough. However, I have also said to many that we need to also acknowledge the atrocity that Hamas um, did uh, on October 7th. Um, and I think that where everything has failed is that the negotiation for the release of the hostage has been done, ha has not been done successfully. Mm. Um, and I think we need to really think about uh, as somebody who actually has, you know, escaped a war-torn country, um, I know the impact of war. Uh, and, and I think that for those who have not been involved or have not suffered the consequences of wars, we can't sit on the fence and, and demand, uh, you know, one, um, you know, com uh, community to act mm. or the one leader to act a certain way. It is a very challenging situation, the situation in the Middle East. And I think that as a community, and I keep on saying this, as a multicultural community, we need to maintain that social cohesion because that is so critical. The people that come to our community here in Fowler have escaped war-torn countries. Mm. They have suffered the consequences of tyrannical regimes and they have seen bombings and killings. So we cannot, we have to be met measured in how we actually address this issue. It's critical. Now, I understand there are a lot of anger from both sides, and I actually call for both sides to really consider the human consequences. And I really actually appeal to the greater goodness of humanity in all of us here in Australia. Australia is the best country to actually address this whole human carnage that we're seeing happening, not just in the Middle East, but in many wars. We should be leading the example that peace can be achieved in and, and a multicultural society like ours. And Fowler is a great example of that. People who probably hate each other in other countries, they have actually come to call peace here in Australia. We need to tap into that diversity mm. and to build that social cohesion, to give us that national security that we need. We can't... I mean, sorry, Laura, I'm, I'm just... I, I, I think that both sides, those who are pro-Palestinian pro-Israeli, both sides have got extreme languages. And I think we need to find a middle way here because at the end of the day, it's the millions of lives that have been lost mm. in this war and the hundreds of, of, of hostages that are still waiting to be released. So we have to be so mindful of that. So what have you seen in your community? What has happened in Fowler since those October 7 attacks? Deeper division, sharper words? Can I say to you, I love my community because of the fact that there is no division. I think um, it, there, there has been a very much understanding because they're all, many of them are refugees and migrants. So they have been watching, obviously, their fears. I mean, especially, I mean, in my community, there is a, a larger proportion of those um, who are uh, of the Muslim faith um, and there's fear. But I also understand uh, friends and colleagues uh, in, in, you know, in places where high population of people of the Jewish faith who are also being impacted. So both faiths have been impacted in all of this uh, uh, discussion, international discussion that we're having and seeing at the moment.